This tutorial will show you how to live stream a Ricoh Theta Z1 360 degree video in real time to the Windows desktop so you can navigate it and use it for surveillance. We're going to use Pot Player, potplayer.dom.net. Let's get the 64 bit version for Win 10. You must have already installed the Rico Theta driver for Windows 10. You can get it from this link right here. The installation is covered in this video on the playlist. So if you don't have the driver installed, just quickly watch this 360 video live streaming driver uh, tutorial on this playlist. You need the driver, plus you need some software, a video player like VLC or Pop Player or OBS to view or stream the video stream from the camera. So th this video here, it covers the installation of the driver plus OBS. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover the use of that driver with Pop Player. Let's set up the camera. Initially, you will not be able to put the camera into live streaming mode. Let's look at it. On the side here, there's these buttons. One of the buttons is the mode button. If you press it, it's going to flip between video, not streaming, but just video, or image. If you keep on flicking it, it's not going to go to live streaming mode. We need to plug the camera with a USB cable into a Windows 10 or Mac computer. Let's do that right now. I've plugged the Z1 into the Windows 10 computer with this USB-C cable here and I'm now going to press the same mode button. Now when I press the mode button, this live icon here will appear. You need the live icon to appear. There's also this blue light here. Uh, the camera is receiving charge over the, the USB cable. I have more information on the charging requirements for the camera if you do want to stream it indefinitely. For now, let's just get Pop Player working. With the Z1 connected to my Windows 10 computer, I'm going to go into Pop Player, then I'm going to select the device. Let's see, it says Open Webcam Other Device. So I'm going to select it, and boom, it comes up with a super nice navigable view. Super cool, right? Oh, so that's uh, my camera that I was taking the, the Z1 with. Pop Player is actually super nice because you have these different views. It's all the same. There's only one camera. and But you can click around very rapidly to get the, the view that you want. So you hear... So it's, uh, it's quite nice, right? If uh, you, you want to give like an in interview or something, uh, you could be talking and then sw switch the view. So I'm just going to show you some uh, settings for a pop player just in case it doesn't come up immediately like it is on my computer. I'm going to right click on it. Um, let's just go to the preferences. For the webcam, most critical thing is that you need to select this driver here, either Full HD like I'm using, or we can even try the, the 4K and let's see what happens. If you want the higher resolution, the camera can definitely stream at uh, 4K. So you can see the rest of it here is just the defaults. See, I'm going to stop, restart Pop Player and let's see whether we can get the higher resolution. So now I've enabled it at 4K. It's looking pretty good. The, the settings is pretty, pretty easy with Pop Player. Uh, you know, actually down here, there's it's some additional settings as well too. 
So I've specifically enabled the 360 video right, right down there that you can see. So in the lower right hand side here, I'm at the bottom of the screen. Uh, just to confirm, you, you probably should have it in equirectangular. I think these other other settings are for specialized uses, right? And then there's this checkbox down here uh, to either display the four things, which I like, but it may disturb your scene. Uh, again, this thing is fully navigable. Another thing to uh, notice is that you do have this uh, gear here and you can adjust the brightness. So depending on what, you know, what you're trying to capture, you could adjust the brightness uh, as well as the saturation of the color to, to get the, uh, the appropriate look that you want. Uh, especially if you're doing surveillance, you may have to fiddle around with it to get the... If, you, if you're trying to, for example, take the, uh, a live stream of, the, uh, of some type of scene to see what's going on in the scene, you may have to adjust it. Sometimes people use this type of streaming technique for uh, surveillance and they want to be able to read some labels on construction buildings or other things. And so um, I've selected the sharpen button here. Um, it kind of it does look like it does uh, make it slightly better. Right? So, All right, congratulations. You've probably got it up and running already. Um, if you're gonna get more into this live streaming, I suggest that you watch this video here, Rico Theta Live Streaming Camera Setup. This is part of the live streaming or Stream Masters tutorial series here. Uh, you're gonna need the camera firmware 1.60.1 in addition to the driver. So. Both the firmware on the camera and the driver have been updated recently to give you better performance, both on your Windows 10 computer as well as the camera itself. Without the newest firmware, the camera may overheat at 4K. This video also covers the USB port power requirements and the specific specification that you're gonna need for battery charging and data to make sure the camera can stream for 24 hours. But right now, let's just celebrate that you got it working with Pop Player. Subscribe to the channel. If you like this type of video, give it a like, and we'll be producing more videos like this in the future. Have a great day.